Welcome everyone to another performance clinic. Today, the topic is no metric left alone, feeding all of your observability data into Dynatrace AIOps. My name is Andy Grabner, and with me, I have uh, Robert Schausberger. Hi, Robert. Hi, Andy. Hi, welcome everyone. Great to have you here. Uh, Robert, it's your first time on a performance clinic. Maybe give us a quick introduction on what you do with Dynatrace and um, yeah, what your field, what the areas you're covering. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Andy, for having me today. Very excited to, to join the performance clinics today as a presenter, and not only as a as a viewer. Um, yeah, I'm product manager at Dynatrace, and my uh, focus area is uh, metrics. So starting from the metrics ingest, ingest interface, uh, the metrics storage, so more the technology is about yeah, how we compress and uh, how we deal with metrics data uh, in general, and then for sure also how we access uh, metrics like the whole query side and query API side mainly. Perfect. So folks that are live, please use the Q&A feature of Zoom webinar to put in your questions. I will moderate. And uh, if you watch this offline or if, if questions come up later, please reach out to us either on answers.dynatrace.com or I'm pretty sure you'll find other ways of connecting with us. You have our name, so it should be easy to guess how you find us or also Twitter. And the other thing is the session will be recorded. The recording will be up on YouTube and on university.dynatrace.com. And with that, Robert, please uh, take it away and enlighten us about where our metrics should end up living in the future. Yeah. <laughs> Not alone, actually. Exactly. To take that uh, in front of. So um, I split it today's session uh, mainly into three parts. So uh, in the intro, I will talk a little bit about what are the news. Um, we talk about metrics and metrics on the Dynatrix platform and for sure also the why, why we built it, what are the benefits for you as a customer. Um, then we will actually start the life cycle a bit. So we'll start how metrics uh, are not being left alone. So how do they come to the system? How do they come to Dynatrace? How you can feed your observability data and all your uh, relevant metric data to Dynatrace? And then for sure, it's not all about storing and pushing uh, metrics to the platform. It's also how can we consume them? How are they integrated? There was already a brief question in front of, um, can we correlate them uh, with existing uh, topology and can we correlate them with services, et cetera? So we will also cover that. And yeah, for sure, we will also conclude with a demo on how this looks, how this feels in the system. Perfect. So uh, starting with the news. So the product news number one, and that's been available uh, for quite a while uh, since version 202, is a brand new uh, interest interface. So that actually allows you uh, new flexibility um, on the system. Uh, it gives you, uh, for example, the capability of having flexible dimensions, gives you the chance to relate custom metrics with topology information. That means you can link it, for example, to services, you can link them to hosts, you can link them to any entity that is already living in the Dynatrace uh, platform. And it will also mean uh, if you compare it to uh, like a custom device and to other ways uh, they exist in the platform in the, in the past, no upfront registration. You can just push the metric. You don't need to think about, hey, what do I need to do upfront? Uh, how do I integrate, et cetera? And this also comes along with a variety uh, of different interest channels. And yeah, that's the news number one. Um, different channels, that means uh, we cannot only integrate them with our existing APIs. Uh, we came up with a brand new line protocol. So we'll deep dive onto that a little later, but uh, main goal was to keep it very simple, but also very powerful and records to uh, yeah, fit all the metrics uh, requirements. Uh, we came up with multi-channels, so REST API, uh, push metrics via HTTPS interfaces, make it very easy for, for consumers, make it very easy for integrations. And we also built like a couple of um, integrations like into an, an agent, an open source agent called Telegraph. And we will also touch point about that in, in a few minutes. What is product news number two? Um, for sure, we also want to see what happens with the metrics data, as I already said. Um, we came up with a completely new mm, explorer um, that's kind of living side by side now with the existing custom charting feature. And that gives you the full analytics capabilities to dice and slice the data. Um, for sure, you cannot only use it for analytics, you can also use it for dashboarding, as you see here, 
uh, on the right side. So it's also a very powerful uh, capability that's actually also brand new, was just released to, uh, with version 202. Um, so should be available for the majority uh, of the SaaS and managed customers already today. Number three, um, it wouldn't be Dynatrace if we wouldn't have thought about uh, full end-to-end -end integration. Uh, so not leaving the metrics alone in the metric store, uh, but also making the uh, alerting and DBCI engine aware of those custom metrics. So um, we will also see in the session today how we can ingest business metrics that have no relation to an entity uh, because they simply don't have, <clears throat> but also how we can ingest and alert on uh, metrics that have a relation and where we want actually Davis to pick it up related to topology and actually seamlessly integrate it into the screens, into the UI experience that you already have in the product. So that's also been enhanced. So alerting per se for sure was there um, always, but uh, alerting on top of custom metrics, flat metrics without topology, that's also new and it's also available as of today. Mm -hmm. And Last but not least, we will also touch point a bit uh, when it comes to segment your custom metrics. As you know, Dynatrace has the concept of management zones. <clears throat> management zones are a very powerful tool how you can actually segment your tenant, your environment uh, into different needs. And uh, we also touch point here how we can do that for metrics that come along with a topology where you might already have uh, a management zone set up but we will also touch point uh, on management zones when it comes to segment like business data that have no topology relation and how you can, uh, for example, uh, build slicing and dicing of dashboarding with this great new feature there. Okay, so brief uh, spoiler on what we'll see today, uh, coming back to why was this actually built and why did we invest in these features and I would say, uh, most importantly, pushing metrics to Dynatrace should get very easy and very attractive. And when you say that, there is multi angles you need to look at uh, because it needs to have a lot of technical integration capabilities. We will have a lot of metric sources if we look out. We have different programming languages, different technologies, different other metric stores where it makes sense to push metrics to Dynatrace. So it should have been, uh, and it is a very open approach. Uh, and a very easy approach how we can deliver and ship metrics to the Diamond Trace platform. And for sure, it's all about um, pushing them. Uh, I already mentioned that it's very important that the custom metrics um, get first class citizens on the platform, I would say, in a short, because it's very important that you also seamlessly integrate them to all the other features. As we just saw, it's not just a flat metric store <clears throat> with a charting on top, it's really just the full capability to connect them uh, with the topology. And that's a very powerful thing. So if you bring your, let's say, business relevant KPIs to the platform, and then you can relate them to your application, to your service, integrate them in impact analysis, etc., gives you a lot of capability, um, brings you all the other benefits that you already have uh, along. And yeah, it's all about actually feeding uh, the Davis AI and SmartScape, not only with one agent data, not only with one agent extensions, active gate extensions, everything you might already have as a customer, no, but also really for your like custom metrics and metrics you wanna integrate uh, seamlessly to the platform. And yeah, when talking about integrations, that was also like an angle we looked at, I briefly mentioned the Telegraph open source agent. We also wanted to make the platform uh, more open uh, when it comes to different metric sources. And when we look at Telegraph being an open source agent, um, I would say it's a perfect complement to the one agent. Um, and Telegraph alone has roughly about 200 different technology integrations. And it's just a, a multiplier for us um, when, when we talk about integrating uh, metrics and gathering them from, from different sources actually. I think Robert to just uh, chime in here a little bit I think what's great about this approach now is I know a lot of organizations uh, have tried to figure out where do they feed their data to right some are using their own data store in the back some something either custom built or at least something that they had to operate and then build a lot of features on top like mm -hmm. finding a good dashboarding and alerting and I think we are now providing a platform that is truly the home of all your metrics 
And if you send the metrics in, as you stated multiple times now, you get all the benefits of the Dynatrace AI with the alerting, the baselining, uh, you get all the integrations with all the other tools, the dashboarding, obviously, the correlation. I mean, this is pretty sweet. Yeah, exactly. That's a good point to bring up because that's also what we heard from our customers. For sure, I mean, a metric stop per se is nothing new, um, but it as it lives side by side uh, with the Dynatrace platform, you wouldn't be able to fully leverage this information. So the values really seamlessly integrate that to all the platform capabilities and to all the beloved features uh, that time trace customers are used to from the past, I would say, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And uh, as a reminder, folks, a couple of questions already came in. So feel free to uh, ask questions through the Q&A feature. I'm moderating them. And um, I think I will let you go on a little bit and then the chimes chime in a little bit later. Okay, yeah, I guess Mot, uh, maybe one or the other question answers itself as we are now exactly. going a bit down to the to the meat uh, of what we're doing and what we've built. So yeah, as promised, uh, we start the life cycle from ingest and want to tell you a bit more about what is the new cool stuff that is available here. So um, imagine on the left side, you have a data source and see that data source really as a generic data source. That could be uh, Prometheus, for example, as being a metric store in the Kubernetes space, um, that could be, I don't know, an operating system metrics, uh, a metric that comes from your uh, home application, uh, maybe home automation. Andy, I know that's one of the use cases we thought of and, and was built by one of the innovation labs. So that could be a generic, any source of a data. And I would say also any type of a metric that could be like infrastructure metric, like a CPU temperature, a graphical card uh, percentage. Uh, but this could also be uh, more of the business related and business relevant metrics like pushing revenue numbers, pushing uh, customer numbers, active customer customers on your application to the platform. And for delivering data to the platform, we mainly brought up two new interest channels that are available on the platform. The first, and that comes along with the public REST API. So uh, publicly hosted is a new um, API to interest data via HTTPS. And that for sure comes along with a payload. You need a token for that. So it's secure, um, seamlessly integrates to all the other APIs you already have in the platform. So more like the public um, kind of push ingest data to line trace. Mm -hmm. In parallel, if you already have uh, a one agent set up, you have one agent installed on many of your hosts. We also saw that it will be useful to deliver an easy vehicle, an easy transport vehicle to also push metrics via the one agent um, to the Dynatrace platform. So we also uh, built the component on each of the one agents that you can activate. And that gives you from a technology standpoint, three different channels. You can actually push metrics with the same payload as you would do with the public interface. Mm -hmm. The nice thing here is, because the one agent is already pre-authenticated with the platform, you can skip the API token here <clears throat> because you're already coming from a secure environment and all those channels really only work local host. So you don't need to worry about uh, that. Um, the second thing, and that's really cool because it's easy, straightforward, is a tool that we call Dynatrace Ingest. And that comes in very handy if you're, for example, are on a Linux console and you really can build and integrate uh, metrics with a one line uh, of Unix commands. You pipe it into this tool and then those metrics get pushed to the Dynatrace platform via the one agent channel. So it's a very handy tool. I will actually show that uh, on the demo a little later, how this works and how easy it is to use. And last but not least, we also uh, wanted to stick to one of the very common uh, <coughs> transport layers and transport vehicles that is out there. And that's a protocol, or I would say it's a technology called DEADST. And that comes along with uh, client libraries for over 60 different uh, programming languages. Like you have a, Py uh, you have a Python client for DEADST, uh, for sure Golang, all the uh, common uh, programming languages. And it also comes along with a daemon that is actually the transport vehicle to a generic uh, metric store. And the nice thing is uh, the client actually doesn't need to think about uh, where the metrics go. Mm -hmm. They just push it. So when you look at how this looks like from your coding 
kind of integration. Um, you just push the metric. And at the end, this daemon really is responsible for forwarding it. And that's what we also built. So every one agent hosts this daemon on, on, on the activation. And if it's there, um, we catch those metrics coming from the statistic clients, from the various different technologies, and we forward and push them to Dynatrace. If the daemon is, is not there, none of the programs, none of the code will fail because it's actually built fault tolerant. So it's a very nice way. I would say a lot of a lot of integrations and a lot of metric gathering already happens with this protocol. And now with having this daemon um, capability being rolled out alongside with the one agent, it's also very easy for us to grab metrics coming along from the SETSD area. Mm -hmm. Cool. Hey, just one quick question. Um, you also mentioned Telegraph earlier. Yes. There's another, I think that also works in the same way as that's is that correct? Exactly. So <clears throat> Telegraph is also, um, and I will cover that uh, in a bit. Telegraph is, uh, is an agent. It's nothing that Dynatrace provides. It's a source uh, project. What we did actually is we coded uh, an output plugin. Mm -hmm. Telegraph, um, simply said, exists of input plugins that actually gathers data from various sources. In, in that case, it's 200 different technologies, um, starting from message queues, etc. And you have output plugins. And one of the output plugins you will find on the Telegraph website is called the Dynatrace output plugin. And that's, I would say, a, a one-line uh, configuration thing. And then Telegraph has the capability to send metrics to Dynatrace. And it can happen also via the one agent in just channel, but it can also happen via the public API. So I would say it's one of the consumers. It could be. Uh, one of the data sources uh, here on the left side, mm -hmm. the Telegraph as an agent uh, itself is been seen as a data source. Perfect. And because a couple of questions came in on this, so we are focusing here on the new ingest channel. That means how you get, how you push data to Dynatrace, right? And pushing can be, as you said, through the API uh, endpoint on the uh, the public endpoint on your active gates or cluster, or on the one agent. And there's some integrations with StatsD and, and Telegraph to make this even easier. And the other way, and this has been around for many for, for a long, long time that you've also mentioned in the beginning, is uh, pulling data in from, let's say, a, a, the one agent through a plugin. So mm -hmm. just for the folks that are aware. Mm -hmm. If you're new to Dynatrace, there has been for a long, long time an, an ability to uh, define plugins that are then running either in the context of a one agent or an active gate that is pulling data in. And we're here we're focusing on the ingest the push option. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. So I would say from a metrics point of view, this looks really side by side. Um, the new interface for sure um, will also be used by uh, our own integrations in the future. Mm -hmm. Um, because it's just a, a channel that we for sure also want to leverage our own because these new metrics, uh, and we'll see it in a second, also have new capabilities that we didn't have before. Mm -hmm. um, but for sure, the main focus for the moment is really custom metrics and integrating them from, from various different sources and being, being open there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that, that's so far to the interest channels. Um, the next thing, and that's very important to see, uh, is how do you send data? Um, for sure, there is a lot of different ways how you can, can imagine that. It could be a JSON, payload, etc. In our case, we decided for a line protocol. And the line protocol looks like uh, it, it's actually con consisting of three different areas of information. So the first actually, and that's the metric key, describes what. And that's the name of the metric, uh, the name of the data points, like a summary. It's like your CPU values, that's your memory utilization, that's your sales revenues, uh, your KPIs. So that's describing what kind of measurement uh, you want to send to Dynatrace, just an, a unique name on the platform. Um, on the right side, and that's just as easy as it could be, is the measurement itself. So that's just a numeric value that you push. Uh, to the platform. And optionally, you can also attach a timestamp if you want to ensure that this measurement comes along with a certain time, with a certain point in time. Um, if you don't provide a timestamp, it's even easier. As you can see in the examples below, you don't need to provide it. If you just provide the numerical value, uh, then we just take the timestamp on the one agent or we just take the timestamp uh, on the cluster and attach it to the measurement. The advantage, if you attach a timestamp to it, you have certain flexibility. 
you can actually book like you can consolidate metrics uh, on the client side and then book them uh, five minutes to the past or five minutes to the future, etc. So it comes with a couple of benefits. Um, but if you want to really have just a straightforward integration that sends metrics to Dynatrace, I don't know, once a minute, you can simply just skip the timestamp and, and just send the metric value alone. And I skipped the green part. And the green part is, is something that is very, very powerful in, in how we can use this on the platform. And that's actually called metric dimensions. And it describes where this measurement comes from. So it's giving you another capability to segment the data that you measure. And if you think about a, a business metric, you can further segment this business metric and say, OK, it is coming from a certain team coming from a certain business application or this metric is coming from a certain host but it's also related to a certain uh, cpu if you i don't know want to measure cpu uh, utilization but you want to break it down per cpu this could be uh, reflected in dimensions so it's actually a vehicle to flexibly slice and dice the data and you can now define up to 50 different uh, metric dimension pairs here uh, so that's giving you a lot of flexibility when you ingest the data. And as you can see here in the examples below, um, I don't know, I, I, I could push a metric that's called the humidity, um, and I can just attach the number of the room uh, to have this as an identifier if you want to uh, measure that breakdown per room. Uh, or I can also then for sure, I will not only have rooms, but I also will have offices. So I can for sure also then have a breakdown on the metric and say, okay, it's office Winterhaven and it's a room on the first floor. And that's precise enough for us. So you have a lot of flexibility to provide this uh, information already on the ingest. And we will see a bit later how we can leverage this information because it plays a very important role when we later on query the data uh, and also when we alert on the data, on the data uh, those metric dimensions then uh, come there very handy. And the interest line protocol, as I said, the easiest way you can do is just provide a numeric value here and then the metric is pushed. But for sure, you have a bit more of a power features, a bit more of advanced features. As you can see in the samples below, you can gather multiple data points and then send just a consolidated count to the platform. Uh, or you can say, OK, this metric is not representing a total value. It's not a percentage. It's not a temperature. It's the count. It's 1,000 new, new packages, uh, or it's a total number of counts. So you also have the capability, optionally, to provide some semantics already uh, to teach the platform a bit how it shall deal with these certain metrics. Mm -hmm. And yeah, yeah, Robert, um, I think you just answered this, but uh, uh, Stefan was asking um, that means can I also use the REST endpoint to send uh, start and stop events for specific metrics and Dynatrace automatically calculates the timing for each metric? So, um, yeah, th this would be something, for example, that uh, can be seamlessly used with StatsD. Mm -hmm. So the StatsD clients have this functionality to um, code something like a timer and then the, the client takes care that this is done. Uh, usually when you think about a metric and, and what a metric represents, it's actually already the data point consolidated. So you wouldn't have the, the, what the question does more into like an event with a start and the end. Uh, the metric and the data point here is just like a measurement at a certain point of time. That's like one of the basic core usages, I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think what, what's meant here, maybe the Dynatrace then automatically calculates uh, kind of, you know, if I send a data point now and in 10 minutes and then in 20 minutes and then maybe in 20 more minutes then Dynatrace is kind of normalizing it without and kind of give me some throughput on a particular time range or something okay. like this. Yeah, for sure. This will be uh, something on the query side. <clears throat> so we will see that in a bit what you can do with this data. So you can then look at, okay, what's been the average over the last 10, 10 minutes, what's been the maximum value that was reported over the last 10 minutes. So there is a lot of different kind of views how to, to look at the data and, and uh, retrieve that on query, yeah. Thank you. Okay, so the, the line protocol and that uh, ties back a bit to the different channels, it's always the same. So you can use this with the public, um, REST interface, you can use this when it comes along uh, with the Dynatrace ingest tool. You can use it if you want to ingest it with the one agent. So it always kind of looks the same across all the different channels. So that's what I would refer 
and what we refer now as the, the ingest line protocol in case you read that somewhere in the documentation help or community uh, the line protocol is really i would say one line describing one measurement of a metric in time mm -hmm. metrics and topology and that's hopefully answering one of the questions that, mm -hmm. that came in earlier um, it is possible in my examples uh, on the previous slide, there was no topology attached to our UMIDI because we said, okay, there is no topology uh, element in the Dynatrace platform. But I would say for a lot of measurements, there are topology information. There is a host uh, that is living uh, as an entity. There is an application, a service. So everything you already have on the Dynatrace platform. And the ingest interface offers you kind of two ways how you can ingest the metrics. The first is, and I would call this uh, like a flat metric. And that's giving you the capability to ingest metrics without certain relation to a topology. And even for those metrics, we offer you the full potential to define custom alerts on that. Uh, and, and if you have something like this, the alert and the problem uh, card will be raised on the environment level uh, in Dynatrace because we don't know to which topological element it relates to. Um, there is also no David root cause analysis because we simply have this information, we don't have this information. Uh, and the other option you have, you can uh, on ingest define to which topology element uh, a certain data point relates to. And you can do it manually when you provide this information as a dimension. You can see that here down below, we have, for example, a dimension that's called the DT entity host. There you can provide the host ID and then this measurement is related to this topological element. You can for sure also link it to multiple elements, like you can have it on the host level as well as on the service level. So you can do that manually on ingest. That comes in handy when you go via the public API. What you also do is when we ingest data via one of the one agent channels, um, then this information is attached automatically because we already know from which topological element this data point comes along if it comes from the one agent. So this information is automatically attached and you don't need to worry uh, about this as a sender of the data. And this is very handy um, when you think about, I don't know, I mentioned telegraph agent integration earlier. Um, you just push metrics and automatically if they come along with the one agent, they are already uh, automatically related to the host entity uh, where the one agent is installed as every other one agent metric uh, that is currently sent. And if this is done so, um, then for sure Davis AI is triggered in the background and the root cause analysis can be done uh, a, an, an error uh, or like a baseline alert is then related to this topology. And we will also say that, see this later on how this looks like in the UI. You can then for sure use drill down capabilities uh, because we have all this information available in, and at hand, I would say. Very cool. And by the way, there's a lot of questions that are coming in uh, and that's why I'm sometimes looking up because I have this on another screen. So just that you know, I'm not losing focus. Right. But there's a lot of questions that I'm trying to answer as much as I can already. And for those people that joined late, uh, if you have questions, please use the question and answer feature in the webinar and uh, I will answer them either live by typing or later throw it over to Robert. Okay. Um, yeah, just wrap up the two different interest channels. They are available as of today. So they've been uh, actually deployed with version 202 uh, starting in September. Um, on the public API endpoint, if you want to leverage it, all you need to do is just to generate an API token as usual. And you have a new setting that is called um, ingest metrics that you need to toggle on. And then you're good to go using the line protocol. Uh, or if you already have a one agent deployed, uh, having at least version uh, 202, you just need to activate the integration that's called the Dynatrace uh, one agent, that's the pipe or HTTP metric. And if you uh, activate this in the settings, um, then the channel is also open on the one agents and can be leveraged um, as, as a plan B. Yeah. Um, Telegraph briefly already mentioned that what it is. Um, it's just one, I would say one example that's been built 
um, and we provided um, on top of this open source agent a uh, so-called output plugin. So if you go to the Telegraph website and if you look for Dynatrace in the output plugins, you will actually find uh, an output plugin that's automatically embedded with the agent. So there is no additional thing you need to download. It ships uh, along with every Telegraph agent build. And this gives us the capability to access metric data from various different sources. So uh, Telegraph works with so-called input plugins uh, that gathers or grabs metrics data from message queues, from, I don't know, other sources, um, databases, etc., and then pushes them to line address. And I would say it's a very easy setup. It's actually one line of configuration you need to do to activate this output plugin if you uh, install it alongside um, with the one agent. But also Telegraph might give you um, an outreach um, to operating systems, like think about a macOS build server. As I'm a Mac fan, I'm always mentioning that example. Um, you have a build server where you build your iOS apps and that's running macOS for sure. Um, and uh, one agent won't be able to deploy there, but you can deploy the Telegraph agent there to also get metrics data from this build server. Um, so it can also be deployed uh, alongside uh, an operating system that has no one agent installed and has no one agent supported on it actually. I just wanted to, uh, because uh, somebody asked the question, uh, is Telegraph a Dynatrace product? I think you mentioned it, it's not a Dynatrace product. It's maybe you can rephrase again. Exactly, Dynatrace. yeah. It's an open source project and we actually contributed uh, to that by delivering an output plugin. Mm -hmm. That's how, how you would do it as a vendor uh, that you contribute uh, and this output plugin actually inside is doing nothing else as actually formulating uh, metric pushes using this line protocol and the interest interfaces that we just showed. So it's nothing that uh, is provided and uh, by Dynatrace, um, we just integrated and we just leveraged that as we figured out it's, it's widely used by customers. So we got a lot of ask for that. Um, and then we thought, okay, we, we just uh, provide this output plugin to make it very easy for our customers to instantly use this and yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. Coming to a less technical topic, but also maybe one uh, that is interesting for you. How does it look like from a pricing perspective? Because we now talk about um, custom metrics here. So they can be uh, originated uh, alongside a one agent, but they can also pushed via the public API. And the underlying pricing model that is used here is Davis data units. So I would say every data point that is delivered counts. And there are two different modes then. You can uh, leverage the so-called host included custom metrics budget if you want. If the metric is related uh, to a host entity where one agent is deployed, this is done automatically. Uh, and if not, then it will simply consume uh, Davis data units. And all of the information is available in the Davis data units consumption screens. So you see a breakdown per metric, you see a breakdown per entity uh, where the metric is reported to. So it's very transparently handled uh, how this is priced and, and built. Uh, I was just saying, okay, wanted to mention that also, um, that this, uh, yeah, how this works actually. Uh, just one quick question, sorry that I, I kind of come back. Um, what about a metric unit when you are sending metrics in? Can we specify what type of unit it is? It's a very good question. Um, at the current state of not, but we are already actively working on that. So what we will provide in the future is a so-called metric uh, configuration opportunity. So in the future, it will be uh, possible that you can send uh, a unit and define, okay, this is a byte or this is a nanosecond, as well as like a description and a display name of this metric in case you want to use it uh, in various different places. So that's a topic that we are currently working on and to be expected uh, early next year. Perfect. And by the way, I'm just going to post a link to the metric inches protocol documentation that we have. I think you have it also as one of your links later on, yes. but in case you're interested, uh, I will send it to the chat to everyone. Yeah. So there's a lot of material out there already. So there is uh, a completely new help page. There is, I think, four or five different uh, public blog articles around the new metric interest from all the various different integrations. I think there is the most recent one is actually from you, Andy, right? The, the JMeter one. Exactly. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of materials and use cases out there, how this can be used exactly. And we all attached that at the end of the slide deck. Mm -hmm. 
Perfect. Okay. So concluding with that, with that topic, that was, I would say, the, the most technical, uh, but also the most important to understand topic, how do the metrics come to the platform? And now we can think a bit about uh, how we can turn them into information. It's, it's a measurement, as you saw, it's, it's just a number <laughs> at the end of the day, uh, coming along with a bit of information. But what we actually want to gain is we actually want to gain uh, information and also automation out of it. Mm -hmm. And with that, uh, we have a couple of new um, views and a couple of new features also uh, in the product. And I just want to briefly show them and also demo them later on. And the first that is currently um, not yet available, but soon to be available. So available starting uh, early December and it's called a metric browser. And as we also already said, the title is no metric left alone. I would say this is the new home <laughs> for all the metrics that are not le left alone. And it's a good overview of all metrics that live and exist on the Dynatrace platform. So you will find in the metric browser all the already existing one agent metrics, you will find calculated service metrics, uh, and you will find also all your uh, custom metrics that you send to the Dynatrace platform via the new ingest. So all the telegraph, all the stats, the, everything that is pushed is now centrally available. And you can easily use this view to search by metrics, search by the title of a metric, Later on, also search by unit, for example. So we're also building towards this area. And then you can simply drill down and look, OK, what kind of information does this metric provide me? Um, is this related to a topology? Is this a metric that is more related to business? Um, you get a chart preview. That's very handy. If you expand one of those metrics, you exactly see the data points that are sent to the platform in the form of a chart. And then it's the easy entry point to further diagnostics here. So as said, available with version 207. So in a couple of weeks, uh, all of you will actually get default access to this new cool view. Quick question, this is available for every metric in Dynatrace or just for the custom metrics? That's available for every metric. So all metrics that are existing in the system uh, are available in the metric browser. Yeah. That, that's pretty cool because this is, especially the preview here is very handy, right? If you see what the metric is going to look like, yeah. Exactly, yeah. And it's also very handy because you can easily filter and you have a, a smart toggle here um, mm -hmm. that aligns with the time frame filter. So you can also uh, filter very handy by metrics that are reported in the last hour. In case you also have metrics that are deprecated or are no longer yeah. reported, so you can easily filter them out already. Yeah, I, I got a feature request. It would be cool instead of just adding creating a chart, uh, getting uh, the metric ID for the query. So I want to be able to say, give me the curl command to query this. This would actually be cool. Yeah, so that's on my shortlist actually. So there's yeah. a couple of interactions that we want to build out of this browser. Um, one is actually create the curl command that you can mm -hmm. simply use it in Postman or command line. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, create an alert uh, for custom alerting would also be an idea here. So there's a couple of actual items here. Um, yeah. Thank okay. Thank you. Um, maybe some of you already saw uh, the next level of detail. So we have the metric browser and you can now use the new metric explorer um, to drill down to one of those metrics. And again, uh, this is also supporting all metrics that live on the platform. So all your one agent metrics, all your calculated metrics and all new metrics that are ingested from various sources. And you can use the Explorer uh, very similar to what custom charting um, allowed you earlier with the Dynatrace metrics. Um, you can use it to drill down, to chart, to build the dashboard tile out of this view. And we'll see that later on uh, live, I think it's one of the features you, you easily get when you see it in, in the UI and live. Um, already mentioned, we also built an enhanced uh, capability in the custom event screen, in the alerting screen for the anomaly detection. So when you have a metric that is coming along uh, with various different dimensions, like I have a metric that is called business shop revenue, and I segmented this revenue numbers that are sent in by the region, by the country, by cities and by stores, I can also use them to alert granular on data like I'm maybe only interested in one of the specific city uh, cities, maybe one of the specific regions. So we can fully leverage the custom events for alerting also for all metrics and for all the new metrics here. And you can simply use 
existing uh, functionality like the static and the auto adaptive baselines also for those type of metrics now. And that's a very cool and very powerful feature. Um, and for sure, if one of those metrics have a relation to topology, so if they have a relation to a host, to an application, to a service, then the problem events that might be created out of this custom event are then related to this topological element. And the problem card gives you then all the drill down information and it's then also considered for sure for root cause analysis. And I think that's the power again from what we said earlier, right? If you have a lot of metrics somewhere in an external system, they don't give you the value that you get with Dynatrace with all the, us knowing the dependencies and then the alerting and the root cause analysis. This is really cool. Exactly, yeah. So that's really, I would say the topic really to, to bring them as a first class citizen. So we don't want it to differentiate between <laughs> metrics that we gather via the one agent yeah. Uh, that is that is loved and that is working very well for sure. There is no doubt about that. Uh, but we wanted to actually provide exactly the same functionality for all the custom metrics. That there is no difference if this is a metric with topology without topology. Um, so we treat we treat them we treat them good. I would say. Mm -hmm. Okay, and because that question already popped up, what about the API? So. Mm -hmm. um, there is already an existing uh, metrics query API v2. So some of you might know that mm -hmm. that's been, been out there for, I would say roughly a year from now. Um, and that's also been extended to give you full access to all the new metrics. And it's been uh, enhanced for different functions to include the capabilities with multi-dimensions to filter, to split, slice and dice also. and if you look at the uh, previous slides, the Explorer and the Matrix browser, all of them are also using this same API underneath the hood. So it's ex actually exactly the same what we expose uh, as, as a usage for our customers. We are also using it on our own on these new screens in the UI. Perfect. And we are from the captain side from the open source project. We are also using the new query API for the SLI and SLO calculation uh, on quality gates. That's really, really cool, really handy. It's a very, very powerful um, API, yeah. Hey, uh, one question that I want to just push over to you. You talked about earlier uh, that you can use the metrics explorer to look at the metrics. Are metrics that are sent and assigned to an entity also showing up on that entity screen? Um, no, they are not. Um, so at the moment you would find them in the browser. Um, at the moment they are not uh, kind of generically attached to existing entity screens. Um, for sure, if there is a problem coming from, from the custom alerting, you will see this problem that is related uh, to this entity on the entity screen. But there is no section um, called custom metrics at the moment. Um, mm -hmm. So that, that's also something uh, we're looking after for, for future releases yeah. uh, to kind of find more generic ways how we can deal with those metrics. Yeah, yeah. Would, would make sense, right? Uh, like, yeah, yeah. perfect. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Rod, I will send information on the quality gate as well in the chat for everyone. Okay, mm -hmm. then I would say um, enough of PowerPoint, going a bit to the meat uh, and to, to the demo part. So start the demo maybe with the interest because that's, that's my life cycle uh, example. So um, on my Windows machine, I have a one agent installed and the one agent comes along with this new Dynatrace ingest utility, as I said. And when you just simply go to a command line, and this can now be a PowerShell script, this can be any, any Linux shell script, any operating system script, um, you simply use this line protocol format here. In my uh, example, it's just my metric 500, nothing more. Um, and that's it. So you push the metric, the one agent actually grabs it. There is no token authorization required here because I'm already on an authenticated and to Dynatrace connected machine. Um, it gives me some feedback that this metric sending was succeeded. And that's actually all you need to do uh, when you want to use this utility. And this comes in very handy if you have like a, a partial command or any operating system command and you want this uh, as a pipe uh, input, yeah, then this is the easiest way how you can integrate directly from the operating system. So that would be um, option one. 
option two, um, and I already told you a bit about the Telegraph agent. And when we look at the Telegraph configuration file, how this looks like, um, as I said, if you download Telegraph, it's already prepackaged with all the different outputs. You don't need to download anything extra. Um, also, the config file already pre mentions uh, outputs.dynatrace, so that's already uh, filled in if you download the Telegraph from the website. And if you would download it, the only thing that is different to my configuration is the two command lines. One is actually to activate the output to Dynatrace. So that's one thing you need to uncomment. And if you do have a one agent installed, the second line that you need to uncomment is actually the prefix. And that's just the naming pattern that is attached in front of the metric that is sent to Dynatrace to originate or to, to have a, a unique name prefix for the metric that is sent. And that's in the case uh, that I'm using it here with the one agent, everything I need to do. Um, if you don't have a one agent installed, um, all you need to do is actually to provide the URL uh, of your environment and of the public REST API endpoint. And you would also be uh, required to, for, uh, to fill in the API token. So it's then three lines instead of one line of configuration if you want to go by the public endpoint. And then that's actually it from the output side. Telegraph in my example gathers around 70 different operating system metrics per default. And for sure, there is a bunch of, uh, I would say roughly 200 input plugins for various different technologies that you can then optionally also configure to get a data from your middleware, from your applications, from your databases, from message queues and so on. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's actually all the magic of, of Telegraph and yeah. So just again, because the questions come up, Telegraph is an open source project that somebody else has started and it's, it's usually popular and we extended it so that when Telegraph is used in your organization, you can then stream the data to Dynatrace. So you automatically get a lot of metrics from this particular open source tool. There's also a blog post on Telegraph and StatsD out there. Uh, we will also share the links later. Now, Robert, one question that came in, when you're using the, um, the, the, the one agent, the local API endpoint from the one agent, then you send metrics, are they automatically associated with the host that the one agent is monitoring? Exactly. In my example here, um, the my metric, it would automatically get um, a dimension that is called dt.entity.host. And okay. then the host ID is already added automatically. Mm -hmm. And then I have sliced and diced this metric uh, to my agent and have this topology already. And this is the same with Telegraph, by the way. So Telegraph is not aware um, of my one agent because it's just an output channel for it. Um, but the one agent already knows, okay, this metric is coming in. And when the one agent is actually filing this line protocol, it automatically adds this information about topology. Mm -hmm. exactly. So that's that's one of the beautiful things if you use it alongside with the one agent um, that it gives you context to the Dynatrace mm -hmm. universe. Yeah. Um, just other brief examples how this could look like and it's really just examples as appetizers. Um, I would say um, the sky is the limit <laughs> for the integrations as you could also see in the blog post. So there is I would say there is no, no, te no technology um, that we looked after that is impossible to integrate as long as it has an interface. So a lot of flexibility. And I don't know, in my example here, I just used um, a PowerShell command, get process to give me uh, process IDs, the name of the process and the CPU usage. That's a regular PowerShell Windows embedded command. And then I loop through the results. And what I leverage here is Actually, I use the Dynatrace ingest tool that comes along. I could also have a, a post. I could have a, a curl here. So that doesn't really matter. In my case, I just use the Dynatrace ingest utility. And all I do is actually uh, here, I built uh, my ingest line. Um, so the metric would be called um, host.win process CPU time. Um, I would attach the host name. I would attach the process name. I would give it a process ID as dimensional information. And at the end, I would just give it the, the measurement, uh, the process CPU percentage, and then this is sent to Dynatrace. As you can see here down below, this is how a, a ready to go um, in just line would look like for sure when you have the values filled in. And I have this metric then handy, accessible in the metric browser, etc. So we'll see that in a minute. 
Pretty cool. And just another example, it was brought up by one of our partners today. And they did a similar thing. They wrote a I think a Python script or a Bash script, I don't remember. And they were basically pulling data from a local database and then pushing it to Dynatrace. They were pulling business data from a database and then pushing it to the Dynatrace monitored application. So they had the real user monitoring with user experience and all that. And then business data that they, you know, it was a, a, a couple of lines of code and now they're pushing business data to Dynatrace. Really cool. That's very cool. And I think that the beauty is really that this business data comes to the platform and is then really relevant for the platform. That means, exactly. I don't know, you have, a, you have an outage or you have some, let, let's, let's assume you have some performance issues uh, on, on your ordering website and, and for sure you have them, but you would also see this maybe reflected in your revenue numbers because yeah. then direct relation. That's really one of the powerful things that you can bring business KPI metrics to the platform, but fully relate them to everything you already have monitored with the time platform. Yeah. Okay, so jumping over um, to the Dynatrace UI. So yeah, in just, I think that those have been appetizers um, up to your creativity, how you can use it. Um, so we, we talked enough about the various different ingest sources. So that, that's what we made it very, very powerful um, that it's not only one technology, it's really a multitude uh, of technologies and integrations to send metrics and at the end, um, if you go to the Dynatrace UI, and that's already a bit of a, a sneak preview, um, you have a new uh, view here. It's called the metrics on the left side. And if I end up in this view, that's showing me in my example, I have 176 metrics that are recently reported and reported after um, 2 p.m. this afternoon. For sure, I can toggle it off. Then I would say, okay, <clears throat> on my environment, I have over 2000 metrics that are totally available on the platform. Uh, most of them will have historical data, but relevant metrics is usually what I see because those are actively reported at the moment and I want to look uh, after them. I have much more capabilities here. I can say, okay, only show me my user favorited metrics, metrics that I chart that I look after on a frequent basis. And for sure you have some, some search and text search capabilities uh, at the very moment. And now the next thing is that makes it, I think, very, very easy and tangible what a metric is. You can simply click here and then the metric data is retrieved. You get more information. You get the key of the metric. You get uh, some timestamp when this metric was first created. Uh, so in my case, this was actually today uh, when I prepared the demo. I can see here what dimensions I have attached to this metric. So remember dimensions is a way how we can slice and dice the data. And if I compare here, those are pure custom dimensions. They are not related to any topology because this is a business uh, metric in, in my example. If we look here, I also have a metric that is called CPU temperature. And that's a simple integration that I built coming alongside with my one agent. And for sure here, uh, I see I also have a, a dimension that is called host that's related to my entity model. So in this case, the CPU temperature metric, it's not coming from the one agent, it complements the one agent, but it's still related to my host where the one agent is living and gives me this full uh, capability, the full information here. And what I can do now is um, actually look at the preview chart here, but if this is not enough for me, I can directly click here and say create chart and that would actually lead us to the second new thing, and that's the Data Explorer. Um, that's also been uh, available for a couple of weeks and giving you access to all the metrics that are available in the system. So if you look here to the metric dropdown, um, you can simply type in, type to go, and you will find all the metrics that are available in the system. And you have then a couple of capabilities what you can do with those metrics. and. For sure, I can uh, here define what is the value that I'm interested in because this data point is reported uh, <clears throat> maybe uh, on a minute basis, maybe a couple of times per minute. So what is the value that I want to extract from it? So usually per default, it's the average of my revenue, but I can also look at, okay, what is the maximum revenue uh, numbers that are sent in? What is minimum revenue numbers, etc. So that's just, I would say, the data point aggregation function that I can select here. And in my example, um, this metric is divided and sliced with four different dimensions. 
And I can here under split by define, um, if I want to see the total revenue number, in this case, that's my total revenue number. Or I can also say, okay, please give me the revenue number per region. And then I run the query again, and then I would actually get the chart, but I would get it segmented to my uh, sales region. So I get one chart line that's representing the revenue in US East region, and I get a second line that's representing my revenue numbers in the US West region. And I can do exactly the same if I want for city, and I think I have 10 or 15 cities, yeah. So I can also look after revenue numbers per city. And I would see here, okay, <clears throat> that looks a bit bad. Um, so somehow during our performance clinics, some issue happened, but it's something that's not happening only on a global basis. So I would also see this here for sure. But if I drill down now by city, I would say, okay, kind of all cities are affected. So that looks like a global problem that I have. And what I did in the background is I teach the platform to look after this metric. And what I would also see here is that I already get a problem. And if I click on it, I would see, okay, I have a sales revenue drop in Anaheim uh, because I defined this alert for a specific city um, because I'm maybe the business owner uh, of this certain store. And if I click on it, I would get exactly all the information that I need. I see when it was dropped, uh, what is the current average threshold? Uh, what is the threshold below it was dropped? And in this case, um, I don't have any more information because this problem is related to my environment. No topological information. Um, that's why I don't have more on, on that side. If I want to um, maybe look, maybe just extend the time from here a bit. Okay, I don't have, don't have another one in that system. Um, but it doesn't matter. If I would have an, an alert, you can just imagine um, if it's related to a host, it actually looks like the same as for every other metric. You can navigate down to the host screen and then you would get all the information uh, from that metric related to that specific entity. Okay. Very cool. Another nice thing, um, and that comes along with the custom charting feature as well. So maybe showing you another way how you can navigate to it is when you go to the create custom chart, um, you already have a try it out button. So that's also giving you another access uh, to the Explorer. Mm -hmm. So maybe looking back to my revenue numbers again, and let's say split it by region. So I see here, I have access to US East and to US West numbers. What I did in the background is I defined the management zone and I defined a management zone that's called Sales East. Mm -hmm. And what I did is actually I said the Sales East management zone has access to this metric, but it only has access to this metric slice of the data that is assigned to the region US East. So you exactly see when I switch here the management zone, I still split by region, but I only get revenue from the US East region. If I do the same for West, I exactly get the same for the US West region. So it's a very powerful feature. And remember, this is a metric that has no topology relation. It's really a flat metric that's living in the system, but still I have the capability to kind of assign it to certain management zones, to certain management units. And I would get exactly the same. If I look here at my sales dashboards, uh, I would get exactly the same information here. So if I have access to uh, everything, I would get the numbers charted here uh, by all the regions. If I would only have access to the sales region uh, re east, I get here information only about the region east, and I don't get any information about infrastructure because I also excluded that from a management zone. So the, the UI completely adopts here uh, also for this custom metrics, and it's very cool and very powerful, and I would say also very unique approach to uh, to metric store actually so mm. it's really powerful it's, it's amazing yeah and that's really just been a sneak sneak preview <laughs> about yeah. of all of it uh, what is available i would say if we drill down into each of the single features into more details uh, we could create a full series out of this yeah. performance clinic so yeah. um yeah just just see this as a starter and a sneak preview um, because there is for sure much more information and much more capabilities uh, beyond 
each of the pieces uh, we've seen. Um, but I thought it's important to see this end-to-end -end picture exactly. from the images to the platform over alerting and then slicing and dicing the data. Very powerful, Robert. Um, I know we're at the top of the hour. Maybe we can just quickly, uh, you can show the additional links that you have in the PowerPoint. And as you said, we probably need another session like this. There's also a couple of more questions. I wanna do a quick rapid fire for you. Uh, is it possible to also report the last value of a metric? So yes. not just, yes, that's perfect. When you are on a one agent and you're sending data to the one agent, is it always associated with the one agent or is it also possible to use that API endpoint to send a metric that is not associated with the one agent? Yeah, so at the moment, if it's going via one agent, it's automatically assigned. Uh, if it's going via the public API, it's not assigned. So you have those two choices, um, but one agent automatically attaches it, yeah. Yeah, um, and then there's a question about, is that an overview of DDU consumes consumption by host? Um, so like, do you get an overview of how many D D uh, Davis data units are actually consumed? I think uh, Torsten did a session with me in June around Davis data units also covering some of these um, new custom metrics. Yeah, so if you would go um, to the settings screen and to accounting, there is a screen that's called Davis data units overview. And that's actually giving you exactly this information. And in addition to that, we also have some metrics available uh, in the background. So you can also use the query API and also explore actually to get this information out of the system. Yes. Perfect. And then last uh, question that I have here around the, around integrating Adobe Analytics with Dynatrace using the new protocol. So first of all, there's an integration with Adobe Analytics from a RAM side where we can pull Adobe Analytics uh, metadata from your website and associate it with the Dynatrace RAM data. And the second thing, if you really want to extract some specific data and send it to Dynatrace, the monitored entity in Dynatrace would be an application because the application reflects your end user application, which is what I assume you're using Adobe Analytics for. Uh, Robert, awesome. Thank you so much. And uh, I, I don't know what else to say. I learned a lot and it's really exciting. What do you yeah. think what's coming and yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much for having me. It's been a pleasure and yeah, looking forward to our next session actually. I'll see us definitely soon again. Folks, everything has been recorded, will be put on YouTube on Dynatris University within the next day or two. If you have more questions, you have our names uh, and you know, feel free to reach out obviously. And until the next time, bye-bye, stay healthy. Bye, take care.